Hey, GearHeads, this is Jeff with Gear Report. I'd like to take you on a guided tour of the Diamondback Firearms Factory. As Cody takes us around the factory, I'm just going to let the camera roll so you get to see everything as we walk through. This is already going to be kind of a long video, so in order to make it a bit easier to watch, whenever we hit some dead space, I'm just going to go ahead and fast forward it. I didn't know what to expect from Diamondback Firearms. The factory was much larger than I had anticipated. I also was completely unaware that they also made airboats in the same facility. So some of the parts that we saw while walking through the facility weren't even gun parts at all. Why don't we do this tour in the order that the gun parts are made? So we'll start here with some of the raw stock that comes in. And then we'll follow it through the process of machining and quality checks and being assembled and being test fired and all the way through shipping. I've toured a variety of manufacturing facilities and I have to admit I was kind of impressed with the level of quality tools that they're using. Uh, th these aren't little handheld old school dial operated. These are, you know, electronic quality metric measurement devices. I've toured a fair number of manufacturing facilities for firearms and for other products and frankly Diamondback impressed me with the level of equipment that they have in place for monitoring how well the products meet the specifications right there on the shop floor before it even gets into the quality control office uh, where, where the parts are checked again. I, I always get teared up when I see AR parts being born. This facility really is just a big maze of CNC machines. And there's just this one angle that you're not allowed to see here. No, I'm not saying that this machine operator is in the witness protection program. This is our brand new lower forging. It's pretty cool that they've come up with a forging that allows them to produce these much more economically, but it looks like a billet lower. And ATF wants them to keep everything behind bars. I'm a data guy, so I'm a sucker for these screens around showing different metrics about uh, the machine operation efficiency and the schedule of parts being run. And seriously, who doesn't like a good quality policy? You want to hit barrel first? Oh yeah, that's right, we're going to do barrel. They are cranking out a serious number of barrels. This one's going to do the four barrels at a time, drill them, do the bore. Once they get four, come over here and get rifled. And depending on if it's a one and seven or one and eight, the machine is going to program to do it the push rate.
I think Cody was starting to sense that I like machines, and if he didn't keep me moving, we're going to be here all day. So you can imagine, when we got to the robot, I had to stop and watch the whole process. Laser all our dust covers so nobody gets their uh, upper receivers confused. Before we started the camera, this machine was engraving the Diamondback logo on AR-15 upper receivers. Not broke, and this is after broke. So she's going to load up the low receiver and she's going to run the cutter through, and you can see that right around the corner. Again, I found myself rather impressed with the level of measurement equipment that they have put in their quality lab to make sure all the products stay in spec. It's valuable. It's more valuable for people who recognize the, the type of machine, but you know, the more high tech working. Photogenic piece here. Guy does it, they, they write down, they QC it, and then it still has to come here. And they run through a numerous uh, QC processes, whether it be the CMM or the comparator, or even somebody else just uh, putting go, no go gauges in. So some yeah. things still need to be done by hand. Yeah. And so it's getting hit like three or four times. So each part is getting, you know, QC four times. All right, little gun triggers. Yeah. Then it would be coding. You'd want to hit uh, coding, and that's going to be next door. It's a brand new building. Uh, we're trying to keep up with the coding uh, demand. Like I say, like every part, it gets checked at the machine, and then it goes through QC.
Wait till you see the sand blasters over here too. So we do powder coating for our boat parts. Uh -huh. I mean, it's a fire hose. The guys <laughs> on there, I mean, he, it's, it's cool. Uh, just make sure you don't touch the chemical in here because there is electric shock going into it. Oh, wow. <laughs> So we hold it right here so when it anodizes this is you're not going to see an imperfection so a lot of people will hook it somewhere in the rail and then uh -huh. once it anodizes it you see like a little white spot oh, wow. this way hook it there it's sandblasted d-bird and then we're going to go take it to the tanks over here and then uh we'll have a nice anodized part Yeah, it'll come through here and then there's uh, a electric current flowing uh -huh. through all the parts and that's what basically causes the, the material to turn black. This is the part of the tour where I actually had to keep an eye on young Randall. He saw these big vats of acid and thought, if I can get in one of those, I'm going to get superpowers. He may have read one too many comic books. Oven. Is it a paint room and oven? Or? Yeah, so our stair, or not, sorry, our powder coat has to be baked on. And here's some of our tower products that you'll see on fishing boats, uh, you'll see them on wakeboard boats. So we headed back across the parking lot to the firearms assembly area. Right, so right in here, they just come through, putting the castle nuts and getting the uh, receiver end plates on the pistol brace, just so production can run through and not have to worry about that. Just speeds up the process for everybody. Yep. She also works on the hammers, um, fluffing up the hammers if need be, make sure that they break nice and clean. She assembles all the springs. It's like I said, that we're just trying to keep production running super fast, and having uh, you know sub assembly teams is, 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 I mean, just works out better for yeah. everybody. Once she gets them built up, Thank you. they get dispersed to the lower, the lower receiver team, or it goes to the upper receiver team, depending on the part. So this half of the room is building lower receivers. Grab parts from over here for the overflow parts for us. Back of the wall, it has all our mobile brakes that we made. Uh, right. This is for our 762 by 39, so we kind of kept with that AK kind of look. Yeah. And then our muzzle brakes. And they grab all the parts over here, make sure it's upper. And then the middle, they meet together, they put the gun together, and then it gets put on a cart. inside the shooter and every firearm is shot and flagged. Three or four man team that just knock out uh, close to anywhere from six to eight hundred guns a day. And they just keep the boxes coming to them. 
Everything over here is web store. The web store gets the order and they bring it over, they box them up and these are, uh, you know, people bought these online and this is our web store. And then that's customer service in the back room. We got uh, a couple ladies there on the computer. DB9's ready to go. We got some 308, 13 and a half inch, about to go out the door. So this is the rack that goes in the uh, where they're shooting. That's why the brass is in here, right? Yeah, so, yeah. They can get brass everywhere in there. Yeah. Show you pistols in the Now we got the BB9s being built up. There's your, just your plain old grip. They made the trigger assembly with the trigger bar and trigger everything as a sub assembly. And it comes through, pins it together. On the other side, they build slides and they put them together and they, go, they also go in the shoot room and cool. test every gun. Awesome. And then all of them come through here and get shot up. And this is a one day's worth of brass so far, and it's lunchtime. So at the end of the day, they, they come and clean all the brass up. After touring all the facilities, we went into a conference room with Kaylee, the marketing director, and Cody, the head gunsmith, and did a brand overview video. You can find that on the Gear Report channel. And we shot videos for a variety of different firearms as well. You can go find those. After recording all of those videos, we stepped back into the firing range to put the new DBX-57 through its paces. And that, folks, wraps up our grand tour of Diamondback Firearms. Thank you so much to the Diamondback Firearms teams for being wonderful hosts. This was a fairly short notice visit, and they were very accommodating and gave us complete access to anything we wanted to see or do or film. We really appreciate that. That lets us tell a more complete story of the brand for all the folks out there in the Gear Report family. If you have any questions, please leave them in the discussion. And also, if there's anything we missed, TJ lives about 20 minutes from this facility. He can come back and bring his camera. So if there's anything else that you'd like to see that we overlooked, let us know. A big thanks to our patrons for helping us bring you more unbiased, hands-on reviews. Thank you very much, and we'll see you at the range.